Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Manav, and I will be moderating the session. Your presenter for today is Raj. We are very excited to bring you um, uh, robot judging, uh, robot judging in Illinois um, from Husky Robotics. Before we begin the presentation, I, I want to introduce myself and my co-host. I'm uh, I'm right now. I'm a senior, and I've been in, in robotics for four years. Really quickly, I'm going to go over how this presentation will, conti will continue. I've muted all of you for now, but as the meeting goes on and you think of questions, please select the raise hand function located by clicking on participants. And once I I've called on you, you can unmute yourself and, take, uh, and ask your question. We strongly encourage you to ask questions in the chat if, this is, if, that's more if that's more convenient, so we can keep track of all the questions. Raj or myself may, uh, may ask questions for you guys, and you all can respond either typing in the chat, using symbols in the chat, or using the reaction feature in the bottom bar. Please use the chat and the reactions feature appropriately. I would also like uh, to let you know that the pr presentations are all being recorded. Now that we're, uh, we got that all out of the way, I I'll let Raj introduce himself. All right. Hi, guys. My name is Raj Dadani. I'm a sophomore in high school, and I currently have four years of past FL experience from fifth grade to eighth grade. Today, I will be talking about the robot design judging part of FLL. Please be sure to ask any questions at any time using the chat, and they will be answered towards the end or during the presentation. Thank you. All right, so during this presentation, I will first be talking about like general aspects the judges are looking for, followed by briefly and generally talking about the steps your team can take in order to plan and create an effective robot. Followed by that, I will be going over the rubric in detail, outlining the very narrowed criteria the judges will be evaluating your team on. Finally, I will close by talking about other tips that can be used, as well as things from my past FLO experience. Then, any questions you may have will be answered. So, the rubric is what the judges will specifically be taking notes on and evaluating you on. However, in order to stand out for the judges and for them to remember you, you want to make them say, wow. In order to do this, you want to present your robot as being very efficient, having a clear strategy that makes sense and allows for maximum efficiency being able to demonstrate your team's method of problems and solutions with specific examples, demonstrating innovation, which makes you stand out obviously, and how it's not always about the highest scoring robot, but rather the design and the innovation of your robot. The first key component that the judges are looking for is efficiency. Efficiency is essentially how you use your two and a half minutes on the mat to the fullest possible potential. The judges want to see attachments that have the ability to complete simple or complicated missions in a small amount of time. They also want to see combining of attachments, which means basically you have one attachment to use to complete more than one mission whenever possible. Another key strategy is how long it takes you at base to change your attachments. So if you have like a huge bulky attachment, it will take you much longer to replace it and the judges will be able to see that. Finding your programs easily can also save you time. And then finally, the frequency of times that you come back to base plays a huge role in the efficiency of your robot. If you come back to base after every single mission that you complete, that's a lot of time that you waste where you could be completing other missions or reattempting failed missions. By combining all of these factors, you could end up saving a ton of time on the mat and the judges will love that. The second aspect would be your strategy, kind of what I touched on in efficiency. How you group your missions together is, a key, is key to a successful run. You want to first group your missions from easiest to hardest, then by location on the board, and then you can finally put together your groups of run. Obviously, you wouldn't group a mission on the east side of the board with the mission on the west side of the board, for example. So if you have a good strategy and explain it briefly from start to finish to the judges, it will lead to success. Iteration is an important process that you need to explain to the judges, and it is also straight off of the rubric, which further displays its significance. Although it may seem the contrary, the judges do not just want to hear you talk about everything that you did and how everything went perfectly, because obviously every team encounters problems and needs to find the best ways to solve these problems effectively as a team. You will want to think of significant examples throughout your season where you encountered problems and tell the judges how you solve these problems and how everyone was involved. Just remember that they will want to hear this. Next, innovation is an extremely crucial aspect to demonstrate to the judges because it could be what sets you apart from other teams and how the judges remember you. If you have a certain cool design or add-on to your robot in your code or attachment or something else 
that they have never even seen in any other robot or team or even thought about. It will most certainly allow them to remember your team from all the teams, other teams that they hear from. You want to be able to, you want to be sure to talk about how your innovation improved from the original product. They also want to hear how you problem solved at the last minute. So for example, if your team encountered an adverse situation on the day of the competition or right before, they want to hear how you problem solved this and how you were able to make it better or the same. Finally, remember that robot design judging is your time to prove to the judges that your robot is unique and efficient. This is if your team is not be able to be one of the highest scoring teams. Remember to consider that while the judges seeing a strong robot that can complete lots of missions would be ideal, it doesn't mean everything. If you can impress the judges with your overall robot strategy and code and be able to show a few examples of consistency with your missions, then you're good. But remember not to take completing missions too lightly though. All right, so now I'll be talking about the general steps your team can take in order to plan and create an effective robot. The first thing that would be helpful before you start prototyping would be to just think about your robot in general. Based on this year's game and board, how will you need to, your robot to maneuver? Will it need to be skinny? Will it need to have a lot of wheels? Will it need to have a cage around the robot? Will it need to have wall runners, etc.? And based on this, you can think of a design as to how you want your robot to look. Once you have a vision for your robot, that's when you can start building based on your team's ideas and missions. Once you've completed this step, you'll want to start building attachments based on your ideas for how to complete a certain mission. Hey, Raj. Yep. We can't see your slides. We can only see your slide notes. Oh. <laughs> okay. Let me try this. I think you need to fix present mode in your, whoops. Like your present, yeah, there you go. Now I can see your slides, thanks. Wait, so right now you can't see my slide? Now I can't see your slides. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Okay. Can, you, can you split your screen and put your slides in one screen and yeah. one half and your coaches and your the yeah And then Raj, you can just share that one screen of the presentation. You don't have to share the screen with the uh, uh, speaker notes on it. Sorry about that. All right, so now you can see this. Still can see your speaker notes, buddy. Oh. It's fine, it's better than it was. Okay. All right, so. Okay, once you have a vision for your robot, that's when you can start building based on your team's ideas and missions. Once you've completed this step, you'll want to start building attachments based on your ideas for how to complete a certain mission. Next, you'll want to find the best ways to complete a, next you'll find a, want to find the best ways to connect them onto your robot and maximize your space. The next step, once you have gotten some missions to work, will be to try and combine attachments, which as I talked about earlier, saves time at base and space on your robot. Finally, you will want to make your final changes to your code in order to allow for successful outcomes when completing your mission. In programming, you will have to make small changes to your program many, many times. This is a general outline of how you could go about designing and creating your robot. Also what my FLL team in the past used, which allowed us to have success with our robot. All right, so this is just what the actual rubric of, the, of what the judges will be evaluating your team looks like. Please do note the rubric is a little different from last year and previous years. So the standard range is from one to four. One would be beginning, which basically means that you either did not meet the standard at all or showed a very bare minimum of understanding of it. It also means that it was pretty unclear to the judges and needs a lot of improvement. A two or developing means that you have partially demonstrated the criteria and that while it is somewhat clear to the judges, it still needs quite a bit of improvement. A three 
which means accomplished, means that you have met the standard and the judges are able to understand your team's explanation and background, and you have minimal amounts of improvement that is necessary. A four, which means that you are, exceed the standard, is means that, means that the judges are extremely impressed by your robot presentation and you've excelled all the necessary criteria. The judges, if they rate you as an exceeding the standard, they will actually have to write an explanation of why you exceeded the standard. This basically means that you have no improvement necessary and you did an awesome job. So the first part of the rubric stated, team had a clearly defined mission strategy and explored building and coding skills they need. Key points to remember for this criteria are that you wanna make sure the judges know your mission strategy, how you planned it and included all of your team members and how it came to life and became where you are now. You wanna be able to make it clear to the judges how you gain information on building your robot as well as programming it and give them a few examples of resources you use that gave you new ideas, which you incorporated into your design. The next part of the rubric states, team produced innovative designs in a clear work plan, seeking guidance as needed. What this basically means is that the judges wanna know your step-by-step -step execution plan for how you developed your robot. This criteria is more than just explaining your strategy. It's more about everything you did in general and how it came together in the end, or just a brief overview of each part. More importantly, however, as like I mentioned earlier, it would be a great idea to highlight all the innovative features of your robot that stand out and are unique. Again, the judges will love to see the creative ideas that you incorporate into your robot, and they will remember your team for it if they are impressed. Finally, be sure to explain your code effectively to, effectively to the judges. Tell them how you organized your code. For example, if you use my blocks or if you use comments in your program, tell them this, they really wanna hear it, and how your code set up for a successful robot run. The next part of the rubric states, team developed an effective robot and code solution matching their mission strategy. This part would basically just mean that you wanna be able to show and explain the various aspects of your robot, like all the sensors you use, how many motors you use, if you use the ball bearing, um, if you had a certain reason for using a certain number of wheels, a shape for your robot, just factors like this. You wanna to explain to them like how all these factors con con contributed to your overall robot run. You also wanna be sure to explain the functionality of your motors and some different ways you use them. The, also, the judges are looking for the reasoning behind your code, how, and how your code allows your robot to act and why you chose to code a certain way over another. Be sure to tie this all back to your mission strategy at the end. The next part of the rubric states, team repeatedly tested their robot and code to identify areas for improvement and incorporated their findings into their current solution. So what this means is that the judges wanna know how you problem solve through your code. Everyone knows that programming and adjusting attachments can be extremely tedious when you are constantly making small changes over and over to get your robot to work consistently. So show them how all these changes added up and added up and made your robot better. Additionally, show them some changes or prototypes to attachments that did not work and how you address the problem so they can see that your team has made improvement and learn new skills overall. The last part of the rubric states, team's explanation of the robot design process was effective and showed how all team members have been involved. This part, similar to some of the other parts, is where you would summarize your robot design process if you have not already, and explain how you found space on your robot to add extra safety, extra safety cautions, such as a cage around your robot, or a jig for a starting position from base, etc. Finally, don't forget that core value still applies even in the robot section. The judges want to ensure that every team member is involved in every aspect, from strategizing to programming and designing to helping others. Explain to the judges how your team made every effort to include all of your team members, and how if someone was falling behind or struggling with something, how you help them and solve, help solve their problem. So now I'll be just talking about some general tips for your robot design presentation, as well as some tips from my past FLL experience, which I know helped my team overall. So obviously you wanna be able to show everything in your video as you explain it, that's very important. Um, you wanna remember that the judges judge so many teams in a small portion of time. So by standing out, they'll be able to remember you and then when they're evaluating you at the end, they'll, they'll know like what stood out from your presentation that other teams did not have. 
So standing out is very important. Um, you want to be sure to include every team member because core value still applies in all three sections, core values, project, and robot. Anytime you're doing something, core value still applies. So for example, if in your Q&A, one team member hasn't answered in a long time, let them answer if they can. And if another team member has something to add on after they've spoken, then you may do so. Um, the next thing is that you want to be sure to talk about what went wrong and how you fixed it because they want to be able to know your innovative abilities. Um, they don't want just to hear everything that worked out perfectly. They want to be sure that you're able to problem solve effectively as a team. Um, you want to be sure to make sure that the team members are able to explain and attribute specific things that they did over the season so that the judges know that they did work. And then finally, you just want to remember the judges are looking for the team that makes them say, wow. So you guys might already know this qualifier information, but you can either select a tournament that has a live Q&A or a video Q&A. So a live Q&A would be on Zoom and a video Q&A would be where you get a list of questions and you need to supply a video of your team answering them within a set, num set number of days. And all teams in a given qualifier will be the same. The types of questions will likely be similar to other years, but they will correspond with the new rubrics. Also, teams will be judged by at least two judges who will judge all three categories. So the Q&A will be one session for the tournament, not one for each category. And thank you so much for listening. And any questions now, now would be the time to ask. Like, yeah, don't be shy. You can ask away. Yeah, you can ask anything. I might answer them. Mrs. Nodden might answer them. Manuf could answer them. Anything about robot design judging is fair game. Um, yes. I see you raising your hand. Um, it's not about robotics, but like, if we have to leave in the middle of the meeting, where do we watch the recording? Um, I believe. They're gonna be posted and you'll get an email after the meeting because we'll probably be looking for feedback too, um, telling you where you can find them. So if you got an email to join, then you'll get an email from the same source um, to access the videos yeah thank you so if you need any clarification on anything that i said or anything else you're thinking about or if you want to ask me something from my past experience in fll about robot design judging anything's fine Are you guys all experienced judges or new judges? Or I'm sorry, experienced coaches, new coaches? What do we have in this meeting? Feel free to post in the chat. Third year of coaching. <laughs> 